It is currently estimated that 70% of lakes are already invaded by the common invasive species, the common carp, as estimated by the Minnesota DNR. This means that more than likely, a lake that you know personally, one that you swim in, one that you fish in, is more than likely affected. This is of great concern not only to you, who are Minnesotans who use the waters for recreational use, but also for Minnesotans who use the waters uh, for economic reasons, those who rely on the waters for their income, such as fishermen. Um, these fish are capable of destroying uh, entire native ecosystems, especially ones of Minnesota. Uh, so to describe this fact to you, I'm going to describe a couple of impacts the common carp have on the environment that they invade. Uh, these include the dietary overlap with native fishes, the disruption of shallowly rooted plants, and the resulting uh, decrease in water quality. Now the slide that I have up is just a, the spread of common carp as estimated by the Minnesota DNR in 2010. Uh, as you can see, all the red is where carp have been present, uh, all the green is where carp are absent currently. Okay, so my first topic is the dietary overlap with native fishes. Uh, the carp diet includes zooplankton and crustacean, which is a common dietary staple of uh, many native fishes here. The problem is that the common carp can eat up to 20% of their body weight every single day. Uh, some of these fish that include uh, crustaceans and zooplankton as part of their diets are the gizzard shad and the big mouth buffalo. In a report done by three biologists, Samson, Chick, and Peg in 2001, they studied the effects of this dietary overlap on the gizzard shad and the big mouth buffalo. They found that the gizzard shad is most affected by this dietary overlap with the common carp. This is because they have a very narrow diet and can't diversify when uh, their food sources run scarce. The other species uh, studied in this report was the big mouth buffalo. Samson chicken peg found that this fish wasn't as affected because it has a very broad diet, which means it can adapt to changing food supplies. Now this is interesting because most of the time when invasive species come, it's predation that we have to worry about and not competition. Uh, and although this competition, the effects aren't severe yet, Champ Samson Chicken Peg warned that this is only because of the high productivity we're seeing in certain habitats such as the Mississippi and Illinois rivers. He warns that less productive ecosystems like Michigan are more likely to see extreme effects uh, because there's less prey organisms for both the native and invasive species to prey upon. So, it's not only what and how much the common carp eat that's an issue, it's also how they feed. Uh, the common carp are bottom filter feeders. To feed, they uh, suck in sand, sift it through their jaws, and spit it back out. Now, in a species profile done by the Minnesota DNR in 2013, they, uh, they recently reported that this actually disrupts and uh, uproots shallowly rooted plants. This kills them. So not only are these fish harming our native fish species, they're also harming our native plant species. And uh, also while feeding in this method, they, the common carp can come across native fish nests full of eggs. And when they feed and sift the sand through their jaws, it ruptures the eggs and actually uh, prevents them from hatching. So fewer and smaller fish are hatching. And as predicted by R. Sigurdsson in an article, in 2010 published in the Minnesota Aqua Newsletter. He said that this competition and this uh, feeding habits that the common carp have will result in fewer and smaller sport fish, which is a problem for the Minnesota economy because a large part of our tourist economy is actually based on sport fishing. <clears throat> Excuse me. My third point I have to make is actually about the decreased water quality following the feeding habits of the common carp. Like I said before, they're bottom filter feeders. And as you can see here, there's a picture of one resting along the bottom feeding. As they sift sand through their jaws, it actually murkies up the water uh, due to the sediment that's unsettled. This makes it the water difficult to navigate for both fishermen and native species. Also, those plants that I mentioned before, they're uprooted, float to the surface and begin to rot. When they begin to rot, they actually release more phosphorus into the water. These increased levels of phosphorus lead to increased algae growth. More algae means that the sunlight is blocked out to the plants down below. Now this sunlight is essential because it, pro it provides a lot of different nutrients that the plants need. So these native plants, are, their growth is stunted and they're often killed due to this effect. So these are just some of the many ways that common carp have been known to uh, impact their environment. I hope that by listening to this speech today, you'll understand why these fish are a danger and why we need to take steps to remove them from our habitats. I hope you realize that they're a danger for three reasons. 
The dietary overlap and the competition caused with native fish, the disruption of shallowly rooted plants, the following decreased water quality. Um, so I'd like you to imagine a world without these fish. Imagine yourself catching that giant trophy fish you've always dreamed of in your favorite local lake. Now, without these fish, you can do this because of the decreased competition and the increased water quality that these fish that you're fishing for will experience. So, happy fishing. <laughs> <laughs>